Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about, um, well, I guess you could say a, a topic that really, really is talked about a lot, and that's everyday carry. And we decided we're going to go ahead and answer this question that's not all that often asked, but it's asked enough to do a video on, and that is, Clint, what is it that you carry every single day in your pocket, in your waistline, and I'm here to talk about that. So without further ado, let's just hop right on into it. Of course, you guys are going to want to know what the gun is. And well, if you've been watching the channel for at least a little bit of time now, you'll know that I've been carrying the SIG 365X Macro. And yes, since it is my everyday carry, it's loaded, not anymore. Federal HST, HST 147 grain, clear. There you have it. Cool, we'll talk into the reasons why and all that stuff here in just a little bit. You might be wondering, okay, so how do you carry it in a holster, all right? Okay, Ugh. Alpha Mega Kydex holsters. These guys are awesome. Eric, the owner over there, just really solid dude. He wants to make sure that his customers are taken care of. And on top of that, he has pretty much the molds for everything on the market, or at least everything that I've asked him about, which is pretty cool. And yes, you'll notice that in this model here, I do have an additional mag. So I've got 17 and 17 here, which makes me happy. Plus one in the chamber, so 18 there which is nice. Again, Alpha Mega Kydex holsters. You'll notice that this has the claw on the outside here, which just kind of pushes a little bit more. So that way it's just a little bit more comfortable and also doesn't print as much. It kind of brings the grip just out a little bit, which is nice. Uh, but anyway, okay, cool. We'll talk a little bit more about all of this here in just a second, but I just want to go ahead and just empty everything out of the pockets. Columbia River Knife and Tool. Again, if you've watched ton of our previous seasons, Everyday Carry, you will know that I like this brand. Columbia River Knife and Tool, this was a, um, a brand, a manufacturer of knives and other tools. I got their axe and all sorts of stuff. Uh, this was introduced to me by my father before he died, and I stuck with it. It's, they still make great knives, and I can find them just about anywhere. And uh, yeah, so that makes me happy. There's that. In the same pocket, I kind of carry on right side of pocket. Obviously, I've been wearing the jeans with those that knife a lot because it's wearing a hole in them. It's about time to replace these. If you're like me though, you're gonna wait till pretty much there's a hole in the crotch before you replace them. But uh, anyway, yes, I do believe in a handheld light and I've got the Surefire Stiletto. I like how slim it is. Honestly, it's only a tad bit thicker than what my knife is. And that is nice. I mean, don't get me wrong, a regular, you know, cylinder shaped light uh, are completely fine. They're ergonomic, they work, but on top of that, they also cause a little bit more, I guess you could say, they just don't, they take up a little bit more space in your pocket. And uh, the stiletto is a nice one where you can actually, first of all, it has all sorts of different features, right? If you wanna go bright, you can. If you wanna go constant on, you can. Momentary, you can, which is, again, all of that is just nice. So you have a low light, medium, high, right? And it's all customizable down here, charges via micro USB. Again, the momentary, you got a button right back here that you can push or if you need it to go ahead and just go constant on to choose what setting it's at. And on top of that, because of the way the clip is designed and all, and it being a little bit flatter, it also fits right to the bill of the hat very easily. And now I've got, well, who's the cap light now? Matt. Anyway, so there you have that. Big fan of a handheld light, not just a weapon mounted light, which we'll talk about again here in just a moment. What else? Uh, keys. I don't have much fancy at all happening with my keys. Obviously, I've got the keys to get into the, the warehouse. Uh, of course, we've also got my uh, Toyota 4Runner key. Yoda gang, where you at? 4Runner. All right. And uh, Daniel Defense bottle opener for the um, uh, important things in my life. All right. Continuing on, let's talk about the wallet. If you're a note taker like I am, or at least you're always kind of in need of a pin, I really like the Hitch and Timber wallet. Uh, it also gives kind of a room here for a uh, an actual little notepad. I never really used that though. I always find myself kind of needing a pen. And what I have here is uh, the Fisher Space pen, which this fits. I think the wallet was pretty much designed around this pen though, because it fits perfectly. Little sleeve right there. There you go. Fits perfectly there. And uh, what's really interesting about the Fisher Space pen is that the uh, United States, NASA spent millions of dollars and a lot of time developing a pen that didn't need to use gravity and you know to work. 
Uh, so in space, they had this pressurized pen that you can write with and all that type of fun stuff. And you can write upside down, straight up, whatever, zero gravity type of atmosphere. And, uh, and it would work. And the Russians used a pencil and saved a lot of time and money. But uh, anyway, nice. this is a basic, simple wallet. I don't carry a whole lot of cash on me, but I do believe you probably should carry a little bit of cash. You never know, right? And then just pop that in there. And I've got, of course, my armory card for the Marines. Don't want to lose that. And a couple of other IDs and stuff like that that are in here. And that's it. Basic, simple. Bam. Right? Cell phone. It's the iPhone with that many cameras. What is this, a 14? I don't know. What? Sure. Anyway, it's that one. Also, um, I really like the kind of customizable look of the topography there. So Tam Famgram on Instagram, you'll notice on my laptop and all that stuff, I've got that little skin that you can add there. It just kind of protects everything. And then I've just got a basic simple, I think this is a Pelican case, Otterbox. Sorry. Sorry, Otterbox. It's an Otterbox that I have right on the outside. Again, that's one of the more loose ones. And by the way, we were just recently at Drive Tanks uh, for the Gundies. And um, well, by the way, thanks everybody for voting. And um, I also had a camera cover on here, which I'm glad I did because climbing into a tank, I actually broke that and it shattered that glass, but it protected the camera. So I'll probably be picking up another one of those. Uh, so that that was cool. Okay, cool, and I think that's really about it as far as the pocket dump goes. So let's go ahead and hop into this really quick, starting with the SIG 365X Macro. Still looking for that perfect red dot option. I honestly just haven't tried too many red dots on this, and I really kind of like just kind of going slim with it right up top. The sights pick up really naturally on this gun, and I just, I like that quite a bit. Uh, so that's just kind of what I've been going with. Of course, with the moment you add like a red dot to your 365 or anything like that, you'll notice that's one piece of material, another thing to get snagged or something along those lines. So something uh, to kind of take into consideration. Me personally, I'm definitely going to throw a red dot on there the moment that I find the one. And I'll let you know what that one is uh, in an upcoming video soon. All right, cool. Like I said, I do like the idea of having a weapon mounted light as well. And Streamlight makes a perfect one for this gun, the TLR-7A. They also make the 365 sub uh, TLR-7, which is very similar to this one, but it has a different mount to it. It'll mount to the actual three, SIG 365 accessory rail. This actually has a Picatinny rail, so just keep that in mind. And they also have different types of switches. This switch here isn't the one that's as intuitive. And I kind of went that with that um, on purpose. Because one thing I've noticed in training with this gun is I have found myself accidentally hitting the light fairly often. Uh, so that's something that I kind of wanted. I switched out the type of TLR7 that I went with because the other one actually has easier to hit uh, controls and I wanted something that was not as easy to hit. And so that's what I'm running with on this one. Reason I decided to go with the 365X macro and no, I haven't had any issues with this. The flat facing trigger still is working very well for me. I haven't had any non shoots or anything like that. So it just works and I'm happy about that. The ergonomics of the gun feel great. I can get a nice high grip on it. Feels like a full size gun in my hand without the full size size, which is pretty cool. And because of that, there's no pinky overhang or anything. Of course, there are more compact guns on the market, but 17 rounds. You got 17 rounds in the mag, and that feels really, really good to me. Now, Canik did just launch the MC9. Uh, let's see, like in the next couple of days as of this recording. So I will be taking that to the range and shooting it a lot. I have one, and I am very much so excited to unveil that to you guys here shortly. And uh, for the price point versus a 365X macro, it's, it's, a, it's a vast one. So will it take the place of my next everyday carry? We'll find out. Cool, continuing on, like I said, Alpha Omega Kydex holster. They make all sorts of different types of holsters for all sorts of different types of firearms, depending on how you want it set up. And yes, I like the idea of having a spare magazine. Why? Because the last thing you want to find yourself in is a gunfight. And if you do find yourself in that gunfight, the last thing you want to find yourself is running out of ammo. So I like to have a spare mag, at least one spare magazine. Cool, continuing on, I've already talked about Columbia River Knife and Tool that just makes a fantastic knife. And I didn't realize too how big this knife was until I got so comfortable utilizing it that um, anytime somebody said, hey, I need a knife, okay, all right, cool, here you go. And then they're like, oh my God, that's a huge knife. I'm like, what? No, it's not, it's like a regular knife. And then everybody else I know 
has a little bit smaller knife, which that's no big deal whatsoever. Perhaps I'm compensating, I don't know. But uh, this I can tell you right now is, yes, it's a large size knife. What's cool about this is they actually make smaller ones that won't take up so much room in your freaking pocket. So cool. You'll also notice the way I'm closing this isn't your simple, just your little lever right here that locks the blade in place. You also have a safety back here. Once you get used to that, you can manipulate it single-handedly without a problem, without cutting yourself. But there you have it. It's a nice feature. I like it a lot. I already talked about the Surefire Stiletto and the multiple different types of configurations for the light and everything else that you've got. It's just overall a really, really good light. Can't go wrong with it. Keys are keys and they work just fine. Wallet's a wallet and it works just fine holding the things I need it to hold that allows me to swipe card and buy all this type of stuff that puts me into debt. It's a great time. And of course the phone, you know, if I'm texting one of you guys, especially in the industry, I'm um, thinking about you, Neil McLean, and uh, you got green bubbles that pop up. Do better. Team iPhone over here, okay? Anyway, uh, I hope that kind of covers the basics of my pocket dump here. Oh, yeah, that's actually a good, good point too. Um, my watch. I know that's something that a lot of you guys ask about. Uh, this is the Garmin. Love that model. Instinct. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. This is the Garmin Instinct. This is not the Solar model, which honestly, um, one of my commanding officers in the Marines has uh, the Solar model, and he pretty much says all it does is delay the battery slowing down, or, or I guess you could say delay the battery dying as quick, uh, but. It does fine. I like it because it is, you know, it's got a GPS feature on it. If you want to track yourself running, exercising, all that type of fun stuff, you can do that. It's got a lot of neat features on it that I like quite a bit, like the uh, little find your iPhone type of thing. So you can actually go to the setting and then if you've lost your phone, I mean, I think I can probably like, you know, do it right now if I go to it and hit the little button. There's my phone. So it's a nifty little thing that I can do because I lose my phone all the time. <laughs> right, so that's a cool little feature. It's got all sorts of different things. You can play your music and all that stuff right through it. Uh, it's nice. No, it doesn't have a speaker on it, but I mean, if you have your headphones in, you can control that stopwatch. It also has a flashlight feature too, just in case all the batteries die and all the other things that you have. It just goes the screen very bright and you can you know, shine it around. I don't know, it seems like something Batman would do. But uh, anyway, it's pretty cool. Now this is the tactical model and a lot of people are like, oh man, what's so tactical about it? Uh, nothing, I'll be honest, other than maybe the color and the look. What's really tactical about it is whenever you go into the tactical mode, it actually turns off all the GPS and Bluetooth and all that type of stuff. So it's not to give away your position in case, you know, the bad guys have some sort of technology that could expose you. But then again, if you have this in your pocket, you're probably just as well not Good, so there's that. Okay, cool. Anyway, uh, last thing I'll talk about on the watch is you'll notice that uh, this strap is cut short and that's because the two keepers actually broke on the watch and uh, that, that annoyed me and instead of replacing the keepers, I just decided to cut the strap and so it doesn't hang off as much. And it's kind of a you know pain to put back on because if the strap's a little bit shorter, you have to finagle it a little bit more. But once you get it, you get it. And that's that. Find the comfortable adjustment and that's that. So look at that, you know, shorter strap, no need for keepers, no need for things breaking. Just go ahead and break it intentionally and it'll be fine. That's at least how it works in my mind. So yeah, now this, we might be able to do kind of like an everyday carry backpack video also because in my bag I have a whole different slew of things as well um, that we can cover in a different video. Let us know if you'd be interested. And on top of that, uh, let me know if there's other products out there that you guys might know about that might make my life a little bit easier. Like you see all these keys and everything. First of all, I need to go throw them through them and throw a few of them away or destroy them that I'm probably not using anymore. I think I use this the most, honestly. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. I feel like a uh, key condenser would be a nice thing to have perhaps. But uh, yeah, hopefully this answers some of y'all's questions because we do get fairly often like, hey, what are you carrying today? What are you carrying tomorrow? What's What, what did you carry yesterday? What's your everyday carry? What's What knife is it that you use that we saw you open up whatever with? You know, and I always talk about having a handheld light. So, well, there it is, the stiletto that I like a lot. So. Have at it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below and let me know 
what you got are, first of all, your team Android or iPhone or something completely different, I don't, I don't know. Uh, do you believe in carrying a spare magazine or not? And if you don't, please give me a good reason why. And on top of that, um, different holster companies that are out there. Check them out, let me know about uh, what you guys have had any experience with Alpha Omega, but let us know if you want something a little bit more compact, a little bit more slim. I don't know, again, I just wanna hear from you guys and what knives you're running, what handheld lights you're running. If you have additional gear that you're running, let me know. I know uh, when we did the everyday carry dump, when I was the warehouse manager for Classic Firearms, I actually carried box cutters on me because I was the warehouse manager cutting down boxes. So as my job changes, my carry, my kit might also change. So again, if I'm, uh, you know, working in an office and I'm typically in slacks or something like that, it might be a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, so to each their own, it's gonna be a little bit different for every single person. So again, I wanna hear from you guys down in the comment section. And uh, while you're checking out our website for your latest everyday carry uh, accessory that you might be picking up, or firearm, or other tool, don't forget to go ahead and get entries in on our current giveaway, which is that guy. That is the FN SCAR 20 chambered in 7.62 NATO with the Leupold Mark V HD 3.6 power to 18 power first focal plane optic. This is honestly, um, I think to date, one of my favorite optics. It is basic simple as far as the reticle goes. I think it's the TMR reticle. And then you've got the spur mount here, which is just a big beefy mount that is not going to go anywhere. It's not going to break on you. And it's not going to, it's in a sense, it's got so much material. It's actually protecting the, the tube of the scope, if you ask me. But yeah, overall, I really love this setup. It's heavy, but man, is it nice. Super clear glass as well. You'll also notice we've got the Tango Down vertical grip up here, kind of running that little DMR type of setup with the SCAR 20. AccuTac bipod, because I figured if I went ahead and threw on a heavy as freak uh, optic on it, might as well just go ahead and go ahead and throw on a heavy, but very durable bipod as well. And with the Surefire Pro Comp and the overall added weight, this is one of the softest recoiling 7.62 rifles, if not the softest recoiling 7.62 rifle I have ever shot. And I really am looking forward to one of you guys getting a hold of it and absolutely running some mags through it. Just go ahead and mag dump it because that scar, the super scar, Geisley trigger in it, two stage, super light. Uh, when we measured it on camera, I wanted to say it was anywhere between two to three pounds, which is just nuts. And that thing is fast, accurate, and a whole lot of fun to shoot. If you watch our video announcing it as our giveaway, you'll see just that. Though it is heavy, and it got heavy trekking through the woods and crawling in the ground with it. But it's fine, I'm here for it. All right, cool, I'll leave it off there, guys. Don't forget to utilize the code word PRECISE, since that is the precision shooter in the SCAR family. Uh, code word PRECISE to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries, and as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at ClassicFarms.com.